Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho. Welcome back to another episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. This series is brought to you by my web shop, justinodisho.com shop, where you can find all of my visual resource packs. In this episode, we're going over one of the most useful video effect folders, which is the blur and sharpen folder. So the first effect here is the channel blur. If I click and drag it on the clip, this allows us me to blur the different color channels in the image. So a little bit of color theory, red, green, blue makes up the entire image. If I were to just blur the red channel, then you'll see it separates that red and blue hue. You can apply a blur to each color channel. Obviously, if you start blurring all of them, then you just get a general blurred image. You also have the option to blur the alpha, which will blur the actual shape of the layer. Or if you don't want some of that edge bleeding, you can re repeat the edge pixels. Another option you have is not only to do both horizontal and vertical, but either horizontal or vertical which I think sometimes can look a bit nicer when you're doing a channel blur. And perhaps you could keyframe something like this to create sort of glitch effects that happen. So that's the channel blur. Next up, we have compound blur. This allows us to blur based on the brightness or darkness of what's on the image. So by default, if we're using the blur layer as itself, the lighter things like his white t-shirt is going to be more blurry. The darker things like the camera are going to retain a little bit more sharpness. But really where this effect is useful is creating specific blur layers and maps. So let's say I was to go to file new black video and drag a black video on top of this layer and use one of my other effects that we'll get to in a later video called ramp under the generate folder. If I generate a ramp of black to white, this will kind of act as a layer mask or information for that effect. So I will actually nest this so Premiere can recognize it by right clicking and nesting it, kind of just like rasterizing or flattening it in Premiere's eyes. And if I set the blur layer to video two, we can now see what's white is being blurred and what's black is not. Here in a more perhaps abstract way, if I have a video clip as the blur layer, you have a video clip of walking on top of a video clip of the person, you can see it could almost look like a steamy glass or ice if you had the right idea with it. So it depends on the video that you're using, but you could probably get some pretty cool results, raindrops or something like that. Next up, we have directional blur. As the name suggests, we can blur in a direction. So you have blur length, kind of like the strength and the direction. So zero degrees all the way to 360 and on. Once you get past 360, you'll see one times. That means it's made one full rotation or revolution plus another 23 degrees or so on. In this way, if you keyframed it, you could make a constantly rotating type of effect, or you can just use it to blur on an angle, which can definitely be useful in many different effects. Next up, we have Gaussian blur. This is one that I used to pronounce wrong all the time. It's named after mathematician Carl Gauss. And he did a lot of work in optics and all type of different mathematical equations. And so this gets its name from there, but basically it blurs things and it has the strength. This is kind of like the go-to one. This is the go-to blur that you're gonna go for. Just like the channel blur, we have the option to repeat the edge pixels. Obviously when it's blurring everything, we're getting a little bit of vignette around the edges which sometimes can be nice and desired. But if you don't want it, you can repeat edge pixels for more flat blur. And even in this, you have the option to do horizontal or vertical. Unlike the directional blur, you know, you can't get the side angles. Very useful anytime you want to blur something, which is usually pretty often when it comes with to video. Next up, we have a more technical one. This is reduce interlace flicker. If I click and apply this onto the clip, we have an option to increase the softness of the clip. And what this tries to do is blur some of these lines, which in certain display and broadcast situations can cause a flicker. This effect aims to reduce that on certain clips where you kind of predict that it's gonna be a problem or if it already has been a problem, going back and fixing it. This is one where I'd recommend you go a little bit more in depth searching, you know, NTSC and interlacing. Next up, we have sharpen 
also pretty useful if you want to sharpen your video clip. In this way, you actually have a bit more influence over the strength. You can increase it all the way to a thousand and cook your image. I wouldn't go about just randomly sharpening every clip. Try to shoot your clips well in camera. That goes without saying for many of these fixing type of effects or more utility type of effects. But sharpen is there, it can be used. Unsharp mask is also another way to sharpen. In this effect, however, rather than sharpening everything overall, it sharpens sort of the edges where two colors define an edge. So if I increase the radius, you can almost see that edge. You can see it like being embossed in a way. But you see, I'm not gonna be able to cook the image in the same type of way as I could with the sharpen. So this can be useful depending on the video clip, depending on the type of edges that are in the video clip. So that's everything in the blur and sharpen folder. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the things in the channel section, some cool mathematical and color affecting stuff in there. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet to stay tuned for all of my new videos and you can check out all of the videos in this series on the playlist on my channel. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.